my podcast, James O'Keefe, and this today, on this lovely day, 12 o'clock, we have the delightful Mr. Nick Jeffries, and he is owner and CEO of New Projects, and he's going to explain a little bit what they do, and then we're going to have a good chat about lots of different things, and who knows where this is going to take us. Nick, take it away. Good morning, James. Hope you're well. Great. So, Great yeah, everybody. basically, Appreciate my name is Nick Jeffries of New Projects of Fulham, and we are a luxury design and build construction company specializing in turnkey solutions for house renovations. So, basically, we take care of architecture, interior design, project management, and construction. But we've got a very, very good reputation for creating extra square footage in people's homes, i.e. basements, loft conversions, mansards and pod rooms. So, you know, customers come to us if they want to increase the value of their property. You know, if they can get a basement under their house, we can sort of design and get them a basement through planning. We can do the construction. Um, so from start to finish, we offer the residents of West London and other prime areas of London a complete turnkey solution for their, um, their services. So, you know, from start to finish, we can take care of everything. Yeah, nice. So it's the, uh, and do you, you kind of, it's, it's for you, it's about the, the customer, isn't it? You know, obviously the job is important, but the customer making sure they're happy and looked after is really, really important to you guys, isn't it? So obviously when, when we, uh, when, when we got first build a relationship with a client, it's that, it's that you've got to build that rapport up. They've got to like you. We've got to like them because it's a two way street. Yeah. They've got to trust us that we're going to build their house out correctly. And we've got to trust the client, they're going to pay us. Okay. So when we originally, when we first had the conversation with the client, we obviously, they've done their due diligence on the company. They may have seen me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. They may have seen our signs out. They may have had recommendations. So all this adds to our branding and our brand awareness. So it makes that rapport a little bit tighter and a little bit quicker to jump into. Yeah. So yeah, relationships are really important and the journey the client has with us from start to finish is crucial because yeah. at the end of it, what I want you to do as my client is to recommend new to your friends and family. So we get more work out of it. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's something a lot of people don't realize is, you know, we're all a lot of companies and people are all trying to find that new business or that new project or that new whatever but it's sometimes the relationships we have from old are the ones that gives us the most you know it's that 80 20 rule a lot isn't it that you know kind of really works 80 percent of your work comes from a lot of the time from 20 percent of the people you've got around you so that's true I, but, uh, we, uh, we deal with a load of i picture a load of architects because mm -hmm. the architects have got loads of work yeah. So I get the architects in the office and basically I get them in because I, I get loads of work myself. So where we do so much brand awareness, I'm getting in probably one new inquiry a day, sometimes mm. two. Mm. So I need architects to work with me to do the planning applications. We've got, a, we've got one in-house architect, but everyone else we give out. So if I'm giving architects work, they will give me work. So all architects and most businesses they rely on word of mouth. Yeah. yeah. Word yeah. of mouth can only get you so far. Yeah. Because if you, if you want to expand your business, you ain't going to expand it with word, word of mouth. You need, to, yeah. you need to 10X that on yeah. social media, yeah. marketing, branding, cold calling, uh, so traditional let's, sales. Let's delve into that a little bit then. What's your, you know, how how have you learned that or is that something you've always had or what what is that you know what's that what's that magic that you that you can kind of bring to something that you think you know uh 
I, I, that sets you apart from the rest, you know, because you're not doing it the standard kind of way, you know, that a lot of build companies get their work and stuff. So why, why do you think it works and what do you think is important from that, you know, from the whole process? I, I, I'm taking the whole, I'm sort of disrupting the whole industry because I'm taking it purely on branding, marketing, and then the final bit is sales closing. Like if I was in the plumbing industry or I was a painter and decorator or I was an electrical engineer, I would do it all exactly the same. So pushing the brand out, never mm. asking, never asking for work, never asking, never asking, just brand awareness. And if you do mm. that enough times, mm. the leads come to you. So new, is very different to any other building contractor because it's all about that brand there, new. Mm. So mm. we repeat it all the time. So I've done, I do many videos on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn, just, just repeating, face it, nothing flash. Hi, my name's Nick Jeffries of New Projects. We're a designer build company in Fulham. If you want any information, please fill out the form below. Or now, are, you, are you also on, on the... The, the back of that are you are you uh, creating value for people are you adding value on your social media platforms and and helping people out and then you know yeah. is, that, is that part of the process that you're trying to do you know obviously so based through social media uh, again I'm ne I'm not asking for anything I'm just trying to get their attention grabbing their attention letting them see this ugly face all the time letting that see that letting them hear me speak about me all the time but yes. they're getting value yeah through the images so they're getting inspired by the images we're posting so that's and your thing you want you want to inspire <clears throat> people in your in your niche in your industry as well as you know obviously you want to garner <clears throat> work you want to get a reputation but you want to add value by inspiring people and letting people know that they can do because clearly you haven't just you know you didn't just fall <clears throat> into this i mean let, let's maybe we lead a little bit into that how what you know how did you get started and what have you what <coughs> kind of journey that you've been through to make you the the you know to to give you this insight and the inspiration and the kind of clearly you're a you're a person who is doesn't give up so yeah talk us a little bit through that you know <clears throat> let, let people know what what the deal is with that so um, First, how, how did you get started and you know what what well, made I you... hated school I, I hated education I hated school yeah. my dad died when I was 10 years old and then when at about 10 11 <coughs> I got into little BMXing BMX freestyle Love and I became very very good practice yeah. practice <coughs> but by the time I was 13 I was I won a competition uh, in my local skate park by the time I was 14, I won the British Amateur Freestyle Championship. I got sponsored by an American company, Skyway. And then I, that kept me on the straight and narrow, practicing, bunking off school every day of my life. Bunking off school, going to the skate park, practicing three, three, four, five hours a day. Falling off, getting up, falling off, getting up, falling off, crashing, hurting myself, blood everywhere, getting up, going again. <laughs> so um, I did that, but then when you get to 18, you get into girls and going out clubbing and all that shit. Don't you? <laughs> so then I, I fell off that cart because 1988, 1919, it's that, it's that acid. Clubbing, partying, did all that for years. You know, maybe the whole 90s, off, I was off the rails completely. All I was into is going out, getting on it. That's it. Didn't care about anything. Were you working then? What were you, What was your? Yeah, opinion? I was. Um, but I got my. I got into car valeting, so I was always. I always liked cars, and I could always clean a car and earn some money. So I had car valeting businesses. I love cleaning a car. I yeah. love giving a car a good clean. <laughs> but that taught me sales and marketing. You know. Um, so I, I, if I had a car come in for uh, eight quid, I would upsell them for ten quid or twelve quid or fifteen or twenty or full valet. And then I got into, um, then I was lucky enough to uh, open up a car wash in my local town of South Sea, which is a prime area, drive through car wash. I had that for 10 years. And, um, but I never wanted to be known as Nick the car balloter. I was too, I thought I was too good for that. I never knew anything. I still wasn't as driven up what I am now. 
and uh, I like material. I've always been a little bit materialistic, a little bit shallow. And, yeah. um, and then I had an opportunity uh, to um, go and work for one of my buddies in the construction industry. Mm. So I took what I knew into finding property. So I became a land agent, a person who found developments for a contractor. So I yeah. did that for a few years. Um, and then I found myself, I think it was the credit crunch, the big credit crunch. Then all around the country was nothing's happening. So I had to reinvent myself. I then went to London. I then started to work for high net worth. I used to find him opportunities. I was working with him for two years. I found some, my first deal was in Deanery Street, which backs onto Grosvenor Hotel. Yeah. Uh, we found that deal. I think we bought it for two million. He got planning approval to refurb it, to do some extensions, and he sold it uh, six months later for 2.5. I made some money. So again, so again you're, it's the, the things that you learned was the hustle and connecting with people and kind of not taking no for an answer or are they all kind of things that were part mm. of you and you know in them days and still failure failure has been a massive part of my life mm. failure getting up getting knocked down getting up mm. getting knocked down you know so when i was doing the car washes <clears throat> going back then i used to have a, i used to uh, then um it got quite big i used to have i used to have a contract with ncp car parks and I used to put car park, car washes in car parks. And then basically I would get a third party to buy the car yeah. washes off me and they would set up. Yeah. Yeah. I've been bankrupt twice. So when I was, I think, 21, 22, my first bankruptcy, just stupidity, yeah. got some debt on a car, didn't pay it. I thought, who cares? Who cares? Bankrupt. And then again <laughs> in... Uh, yeah. When I was at, at, just before the car wash, yeah, when I had the car wash in, in, in NCP, we set up a big deal. It went wrong. I had a director's a guarantee on a, on, a, on a loan. Again, who cares? At the time, I was going through some terrible situations with my, my wife. Mm. And, um, you know, I was... And it was you, got married, you got married quite young then. Oh, I got married... Uh, no, well, I got married um, in 2005. So I was, at the time, I was just getting into property at the time then. Yeah. But it, this is... It, this, you know, just slightly after that, we were getting into the credit crunch. So everyone, the whole world's upside down. She, like, she was blaming me for the credit crunch. <laughs> I, I was again losing, you know, pressure, stress. I wasn't yeah. very nice. Yeah. She wasn't going to stay with me. So we got divorced. So I've lost everything. Yeah. Got divorced. Very. How old, how old are you now? I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm I was fifty uh, in uh, March twenty ninth. And and when so then so in in that year you were when you were how old? I was about thirty. About 35, 35, 36. Yeah. Yeah, I think she, I think we finally got divorced in when I was 40. Mm. But that's part of my journey. So, yeah. you know, divorce. You went through all of that. You went through the, the credit crunch. The credit I crunch. What I, was I had nothing. Yeah. I had nothing. Yeah. I sit around my mum's house in the garden, hands on my head. Yeah. Just where do I go from here? Where do I go? What do I do? And, and how long? And how long did that last for you? That that mindset? Because obviously, you know, I think a lot of people will probably resonate with that. That there's there's a lot of people have some big downs, and to come back from it, you know, how how long did it take you to kind of just sit there and just go, you know what, feel sorry for yourself a bit, and then move forward? Can you remember? Can you every literally um, as long as I can go to bed and get up the next day, I'm fine. Mm. Until another problem hits you in the face, because you don't you don't get you don't get one problem at a time, you get yeah. five or six, okay. that, yeah. and, and it whacks you down, it whacks you down, it whacks you down, it whacks you down. But then yeah. you have a glimmer that you know. So at the time, and then I was just getting into the London property. I was finding a few deals. I was hustling. I was ducking and diving, and then someone said to me out the blue, one of this 
person's friends who I was working with doing the high net worth land sourcing. He said, Nick, if you find a property, I'll give you the money for doing it. And you were like, okay, yeah. So my first deal, I found a property in Primrose Hill and it cost a quarter of a million quid. He, he funded it. It cost yeah. 20 grand to do it up or 30. Yeah. And then we sold it for 350. I had a little bit of money. Then yeah. we bought another property, bought it for 500 in Fulham, spent 200 on it, sold it for 900. And then I was slowly off. And that is when neighbors either side said, do you want to do my house? Can you work with me? And that's when new started. So that's when I brought my ex-business partner into the mix. He was the, he was the builder and we started new. And that was, that's 10 years ago. Right. Nice. Nice. But yeah, all the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs, they don't ever end. They just yeah. carry on. Yeah. Carry, every day, it's happened this morning, problems. Corona, problems. Yeah. Life, yeah. problems. But in the, and you're right, it's, it's, it's how you view them, isn't it? Because they are, because it's a funny one. You get up in the morning sometimes, you stub your toe. You know, you, you go and turn the tap on, the tap breaks. You go, you know, you go upstairs, you drop a cup. You go open the fridge and someone falls out of the fridge. You know, and then a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's the day doomed. That's the day over. But it's just part and parcel, isn't it? You know, you have to just decompartmentalize, you know, and just go, well, that was that. Now we move on to that, you know? And I think you sound like you do that. You just go, okay, well, that's a problem. Now let's move on to, to find the solution. And then we carry on. If, if, you got a, if you have got a calm, easy life, you mm. have got an empty life. Nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna attract anything into your life at mm. all. Mm. If you're out there, if you're putting yourself out there doing more difficult um, situations, you know, I don't, you know, some meetings that I think, oh God, I don't want to do that today, but you've got to do it. Be uncomfortable, get yourself in uncomfortable situations and it grows you as a person. Mm. But you know, lots and lots of people around the country, like now they've, everyone's just, everyone's so worried about the Corona, it's Corona, so it's lockdown, isn't it? Everyone's worried, they're not growing. I think this is an opportunity for everyone to grow and do I things at home and work on opportunities. I think it's, I think it's a huge opportunity. And I think, I think for some it's, it can be an opportunity. And I think for others, it could be a, a little time to just reevaluate, you know, you haven't got to be like, you know, changing the world, you know, while we're all on lockdown, but you could just be reevaluating and, and, you know, thinking of new ideas and just putting a different spin on your own life. You know, I don't, I think the pressure there sometimes is everyone's got to be, you know, oh, I've got to do this and I've got, you know, you see it on Instagram, everyone training and doing this and living their best life, even in the coronavirus. But I think there's still a, a side of it where you can just reevaluate, take, take a bit of time to look at what you're, you know, what's working and what's not working. Cause we've all, I think we're all a hundred miles an hour. And sometimes th this for, for me personally, is, is kind of taking a bit of time to go, okay, what, what have I wanted to do that I've been putting off, you know? And then I think we can double down on that. I think it's a, I think it's a good tactic, you know, in this environment. No, I do, I do, I do. Yeah. And it's so, so you went, obviously you, uh, 10 years ago you started new and um, I doubt it's been all uh, sweetness and light, has it along there? Um, tell wait, us about wait. your, you know, your journey from here and, and, you know, how you, how you kind of, how you decided to grow it and market it and what you, uh, you know, what you kind of want from it. So when, when new started, we used to drive up to London in our little smart car, you know, so I'm six foot, he was six foot three buzzing up the road. We're going to be the next candy and candy. We're going to do this, but if they can do it. If they can do it with no personality, we're gonna fly. It's gonna be easy. So that was our mindset. So yeah. we, we, I was I was always very good. You know, I created my own website, and I, I knew about uh, marketing and branding through the car wash and big businesses. Mm -hmm. And I also we, we, this was at the time when Google AdWords were quite young, and um, I knew if I bought that keyword. Fulham Builders, Chelsea Builders, Fulham Basement, Chelsea, you know, that kind of thing. It would put me to the top. 
So we were, we were spending money on marketing and branding and advertising. And then uh, the phones were ringing, only small jobs at, at the beginning, loft, little loft conversions and you know, not big. And then one of our first ever clients was uh, an Australian lady. So the phone call comes in. Um, hi, uh, do you mind uh, coming to my, um, my, 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 my boss's uh, factory in Fulham because we want it painted and decorated. We're just moving in and it's going to be for storage. I said, okay, right. we'll go around there. And um, uh, we're painting and decorating it and we're, we're thinking, it's only a 15 grand job, but it's something in our pockets. Yeah. Um, who's this person? You know, is, who is it? Celebrity? Who is it? Who can it be? So we were all guessing who it could be. And one day we turned up and um, in the middle of the uh, uh, office space was um, a big aluminium flight case. Kylie Minogue, well tall. Uh. <laughs> yes! We were, we were ch thrilled to pieces. Yeah. So a couple of Jack the Lads, right? So we've opened up the flight case. Right? No one else is around, just me and, me and Richie opening up. And it was all a... Uh, underwear and bras and all the rest of it. So we've got our knickers on our head doing selfies. Okay. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. But this all got back to Kylie, right? right. And Kylie said, then, then um, we still pretended we didn't know who it was. And then her PA said, um, uh, my boss would, has asked if you'd like to come to her house because she's got some work for you. So, we go, oh God, we're going to turn up in a bit, go to Kylie's house, Drake, in, in Chelsea somewhere. We turned up, she's on the sofa, me and Richie walks in, she goes, I've heard about you cheeky boys. <laughs> and from that moment onwards, it was a brilliant yeah, relationship yeah. because she yeah. knew, we didn't, we didn't care, we just have the laugh. Yeah. And uh, she was the first sort of, um, sort of celebrity client, which sort oh, of oh, took oh, us yeah. off. Yeah. And, and how, our, long, how long was that after you kind of started new? Uh, I think it's probably, um, so we've made maybe two years into it, two years into so, it. You know, it's still, it, it's, it was two years of, of dress, graft, you know, marketing, putting your name out there, hustling, hustling you know, do, doing all little... of that, just meetings, getting yourself out there, chatting, you know, all of that really just constant grind, you know, how, how many hours a day would you put in? I tell, well, in, in the beginning, I'm, not, I'm working harder now than I ever have done in my life. Really? Back then, I never knew what hard work was. Okay. I was a little bit lazy because we thought when, when we started new, everything went, it went quite quickly and smoothly through normal clients to Kylie, okay. to David Gandhi, yeah. the loads of celebs, yeah. um, which we then milked for social media. We got us more work for branding, yeah. but yeah. Um, it, it went quite quickly. Um, so yeah, it was, it was hard work but we never realized how good we had it. Yeah, okay. We, it was all about materialistic things, you know, so if we earn money, oh, let's, have, let's spend it on, let's go and buy a watch, let's go and buy, it was, it was stupid. Yeah. It was stupid. And yeah. then, you know, we were doing projects, you know, 2006, 2013, 14, 15 and 16 were our really, was really good years. We were doing, uh, double basements, triple basements, massive uh, four new build houses um, in yeah. Fulham. Yeah. And that is when we, in, we increased our, um, our staff. We, had, we bought, had four interior designers, four architects, yeah. hustle and bustle. We created yeah. a little uh, monster. Yeah. And, um, but that causes problems in itself. <laughs> and that is when the cracks started to appear. Mm between me and my ex-business partner. Okay. We've been mates for 30 years. Yeah. And then he decided to, behind my back, which I never knew for a year, set up a new company with one of the interior designers. Mm -hmm. So I never knew this. And this was still trials and tribulations, even 
midway through. This is at our peak. So again, a year later, I find out and everything went tits up. Yeah. Everything went tits up. Our relationships yeah. over. We had projects on the go. There was a lot of yeah. casualties. Um, we decided to close the company down. There was problems with you know people and and, and suppliers. And yeah. then I I kept new. I rebranded. It used to be called New Builds. I rebranded as New uh, Projects, yeah. and um, I kept the office. I started on my own again, and I went. We went from heroes to zeros on my own within six months. So yeah. beginning of 2017, yeah. I've got a big office on my own. I've got, I've got rid of everyone, all the staff. I couldn't trust anyone. I got rid of every single person. I yeah. traveled up to London on my own, sat in my office on my own, working on the next master plan. And I had no jobs on the table. So I had to really put on a show to pretend to show the world yeah everything's good where yeah. I, realistically i was thinking how the hell am i going to pull this one off how am i going to get back on my feet and i did because what i did I, I just put out so much content on social media and marketing and branding so anyone yeah. looking on thought there was no problems yeah. and that's what we did so slowly it took it probably took 2017 was rubbish 2018 still rubbish because we've had brexit and all the rest of it and yeah. then 2009 end of 2018 2019 now back up to where it was isn't it funny that, sheer hard work yeah and but but isn't it funny that you've done that through through not only a split of business you know you, you've had to kind of reevaluate everything you've then had brexit and then you've had the coronavirus and everyone's always moaning about, ah, oh, you know, I can't do this because of that. And I can't get through this because of this. And, but you seem to have found a way to survive it all. And now not only to survive, but thrive. So that must give you some, you know, a, a little pat on the back or do you sit there? You know, even my, uh, my, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I didn't tell a bit of story. So I got divorced. And then yeah. when I got the company back together again, I actually won my wife back. So okay. we're now yeah. back together. So we were, we were, yeah. we were, we were divorced, yeah. separated for four years, business picked up again, proved to her um, I'm, you know, mentally sound and I'm, you know, I'm, I've got the family back together. So we're now back together. So, but even now, Zoe is a person where, she sees the glass half full all the time. Mm. She's, she's a little bit pessimistic. Mm -hmm. now, I'm very optimistic. Oh, I no, so she, sees the glass, she sees the glass half empty. You see it half full. I see, I, I see, the, I see the glass always full. You know, that, yeah. you know I'm yeah. always so seeing the best. Full. I'm seeing all the, I'm seeing the best in everyone. Yeah, she's the, the other way. Yeah. yeah, she's the other way. But yeah. even now, she realizes what is going on in our little family circuit. Now I'm, I'm not only motivating the family, I'm motivating all of her friends around us as well, giving mm. them advice, letting them, giving them advice for their social media groups, mm. little campaigns. I, mm. I, I speak to lots of people on, on Zoom about you know, their businesses. They, you know, people can learn off of my trials and tribulations and what I do to, you know, move forward. And how, is that, is that something that you enjoy or do you just find yourself just being that person or do you, do you genuinely care about people and trying to help them? And is it from a place of you don't want them to go through what you've gone through or you just feel like I've gone through so much. I've got a lot I can help people with. I think I've got a lot to help people with and nothing not not to be financially um rewarded for it yeah just to give them advice yeah because nothing nothing is more important than our health right mm. so as long as we're healthy mm. hallelujah let's go and take on the world you okay. you said to me if you said to me nick i've got a business opportunity you in and i'll say all right let's have a look all right let's start it let's go Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. 
I won't see the next, I won't just, I won't hang around if it's good, let's do it, let's take, take action now. People yeah. don't take action. They're too scared to take action. Are you, um, I mean, that's a good point. Are you, so <laughs> do you do much, are you a, a heavy researcher or do, would you just rather jump in, you know, and then kind of, and then kind of go through it from there? Or are you, are you a, a researcher and then, you know, take a while to do it? Or as you say, you just go, right, I'm in and then find your feet. I think everything is common sense. Everything mm -hmm. is most businesses are the same. Most, most life opportunities are mostly the same. People overthink things. They make, they make hurdles. Just so move break it down. Down. What, what, how, do you, how do you see that? Break it down as a, as a you know, what, what do you think is the kind of, is the process that we go through then or can go through to, to start something new? You know, because a lot of people are scared by trying to start something new or trying to start, you know, particularly in this time, you know, they're sitting at home thinking, what can I do? You know, what, what because they do haven't got any experiences. They don't, they haven't had the experiences which I've had or you've had. You know, mm -hmm. your trials and tribulations have made you the man you are. Mine mm -hmm. are, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's like my, my daughter upstairs, 16 years old. I tell her every day, she's probably in bed now, you know, it's time. I'll pass, I'll pass 12. She's probably on bed, in bed like this with a phone. Mama, do you mind getting out of bed? Do you want to do, you know, I'm bloody 50. Do you want to come downstairs and do some TikToks with me? Film your dad doing stupid TikToks. Yeah. Not interested. Yeah. Creating. If you've got a mobile phone, this controls the world. Do some drop. If we can go on um, alibaba.com and we buy this pen for 20 cents, right? Mm -hmm. 20 pence, 20 cents, whatever currency you want to use. And then if we can buy 10,000 of these and we can send them at one, one pound, one dollar a pen on drop shipping through Instagram ads, Facebook ads, hallelujah. Mm. Easy. But people can't be bothered. Mm. It's like those um, on the news the other day when uh, the farmers want um, pickers to pick their strawberries and fruit and vegetables for the summer. Yeah. You try and get any British workers to do a job like that. Yeah. Ain't never going to happen. Everyone wants more money. Everyone's got their hand out. They don't do it. So the, 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 the Europeans, the, the Romanians and Bulgarians, they come over. They're not, they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's where, where do you see that? Where do you see that that's gone wrong? Because it wasn't the case, you know, what has, what has that, how has that happened, do you think? You know, how have we become, you know, that kind of community or that kind of uh, country or, you know, what is it? Is it the young people? Is it, is it our age? Is it because we haven't given enough into our children to make them want to do I stuff? Think, I, think the government, I think the government give too much away to people. There's too many benefits. Too many benefits. Too many people with their hands out. Hmm. Maybe they need it, but... 50, 60, 100 years of it, you're not getting benefits. Mm. That's it. You, you, you've got to fight for your money. Mm. And you'll see the people who get the benefit, people who get the most benefits will, the, will it be the people who complain the most as well. Mm. They're so you, the ones who complain. Are you, are you more akin to what goes on in America then? Do you prefer, you know, that there's no social security kind of thing or... Oh, no, I, you know, the NHS, I love the NHS. You know, I, I, I'm, I love the royal family. I love Great Britain. You know, I would do anything for my country. Anything, yeah. I love it. But we are very lazy. Mm. The English people are very lazy. And that's just how it is. That's how it is. Uh, you know, Jesus Christ. If they, I think all men, right, should join the military when they're 16, 17, 18 years old and do two or three years in the in the in the marines you know when i i didn't you know when i was when i was 21 i joined the marines you know i, I went out of a bird um who whose father was a color sergeant in the marines yep. and this is the time of the gulf war i think the first gulf war mm -hmm. and he thought he was something special this is when i was off the radar gone completely got a ministry of sound mental and um but i was always fit and i thought to him do you know what i'm gonna join the marines just to piss him off, just just to do it. Okay. And even to get accepted into the three day 
even to get accepted is really hard. So I got accepted. I did yeah. my basic training as a Royal Marine commando, and yeah. um, and I I didn't pass out because I had to find a way out because it wasn't for me. <laughs> I did it for a period of time. Um, the, the 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 training team said, "Jeffries, what the hell are you doing here, son?" Because I had a nice submariner, I had a pretty girl girl on the wall. They said, "What are you doing?" I said. So I don't know what I'm doing here. Do you know what I mean? I, I had to find a way out. So it, I think, it, but every single day, that joining that marine, the marine uh, 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 troop, it made me disciplined about mm. cleaning, about looking after myself, about ironing, about washing, but just discipline. Yeah. People don't have discipline. Yeah. People don't have yeah. discipline. And do you think that's? But it must have. Uh... It must have come from a progression, you know. It wasn't like that a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, so sixty years ago. So where has that, you know, where has that come through? Where has that come from? I, is is it a? I think it's a continuation of of. It's, it's people being soft. It's do you think being soft? Of, do you think it's it's because we've gone from? I think there needs to be a balance, doesn't there? You can't go from like what it was. You can't go from like. You know, beating kids at school to like, you know, to to now you can't even talk. You know, you can't even say to a kid, "Don't do that." You, know, you, can't, it's like, you can't even tell your own kids off. I know, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, if I I told my daughter off uh, about six months ago, so a year ago, she did something really bad. All right, and I was with my missus, and uh, she called the police on me. I had the police come down in the morning. <laughs> No. Yeah, that's because they're crazy. They're, they're anything to do, you know, because the the kids are naughty. They go yeah. through. They go through control. They try and control mum and dad. They can. They yeah. control the teachers. Yeah, yeah. They they know no one can do anything, and once they know in their that's, group, yeah. they can have a bit of control. Mum and dad yeah. can't do anything to you. The, the teachers can't do anything to you. But now it's changed. Now she's sixteen. It's different. Is it? Okay. She's an adult now. She's a young adult. Yeah. And what's she, what's she up to? What do you want, you know, what are you trying, obviously you're trying to give her a bit of impetus to go and do something, but, you know, you... <laughs> Well, I'm like that with my, I'm like that with my, uh, I've got nieces and nephews and, I, and some, you know, you obviously, I think, I think it's the way we t tell them as well. I think we have to show them as well the way to be. And I think a lot of it is, you know, monkey see, monkey do, isn't it? If we can, if we can not only just talk to them and tell them, but if we can show them things as well, rather than just, you know, I'm, I'm very aware. I, the, the, the big thing I say to my niece and nephews, be very careful of who you take advice from. And when I say that, I mean, if you want to know about money, do you want to talk to someone who hasn't got any and learn from them? Or do you want to talk to someone who is successful in the accumulation of money? You know, that that's for me is like what, where I, so I always say to them, look, find someone that you respect that they've done something that you want to do and then ask them for their advice. Don't ask, you know, a, a butcher advice on, you know, how to make a box for, you know, you just don't do that. You ask a butcher how to cut mm. some meat. So I'm very aware that, you know, I, I think we need to tell people and show them the right way as well, you know? It's very diff difficult with kids because they, they don't listen to mum and dad at all. I they could do you. Did you? Not really. No, but <laughs> it's, you know, but I was driven. You know, don't forget when I was, when I, when I was 12 years old and, and what got me into BMXing was ET. So when ET came out in 1982, I wanted to fly on a bike through the bloody. And, BM, and BMX Bandits, surely. And BMX Bandits, yeah, with Nicole Kidman. Oh, yeah. What a, what a film. Yeah. But that, you know, <laughs> so I've always been very, very driven and focused. Doesn't mean I've, yeah. I've been, you know, I'm still chasing the dream now. You know, I've, yeah. had, I've, I've made money, I've lost money, I've made, I've done it. That's what's been my journey all my life. But now, my 50s, my 50s to my 60s, I'm convinced are going to be the best yet because I've got good people around me and I'm, I'm more switched on. I'm taking lots of educational stuff in and, and YouTube and stuff like that. And what is that? What is that? What is success for you? What is like the measure of success for you? 
Nick Jeffries, you know, what is like, when will you, will there, ev will it ever be? I think, okay, I think I'll, now, I'll... I think now it's all about security. It's security okay. for, if I drop dead now, who the hell's to look after my, my missus and my daughter? So what we need to build the company up so it gets to a certain level that it runs itself and then there's a right. value in the company. Yeah. Um, and then I would love my daughter to learn about maybe architecture or interior design and she comes on board. She's 16 years old now. So 16, 17, 18, you know, she, she's not going to go to university. She hates university. So her university will be with me. Come with dad, spend time with me yeah. and, and, and get, get into it. Yeah. You know, because the people in my office, they're young entrepreneurs. Uh, I've got uh, one uh, girl called Claudia. She, I think she's 25. I've got Matty. He's 18. So switched on, so dynamic. They're going to be successful because they've got the X factor. And yeah. that's why we all want to be surrounded by the people who've got that little something different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I have to motivate people around me. You know, I'm, at, I'm, I'm the head of the household. I'm the head of the business. So everyone is watching me. I can't have a bad day. If I speak to my contracts managers and I'm down, guess what yeah. that's going to do? He's going to come down. How does that pressure for you? How does that feel? You know, and on, on your bad days, I mean, what, what's the worst mm -hmm. you felt? Have you had a depression? Have you, you know, have you, you know, talking about mental health kind of things, have you had a, have you had issues with that where you've just been like, you know, after these bad things have happened and has it hit you really hard? you know, mentally, physically, what is it, you know, how is it, how is it kind of treated you over the years? I think um, I've definitely had some issues, um, obviously with my dad dying at 10. If I went to a therapist now, that would probably unravel a load of problems, 100%. Um, when I got divorced and at the same time I was sort of going bankrupt for the second time, that was bad. I had nothing. Yeah. I, had to, I had, my my stepdad had to uh, a contract hire me a little car. I used to go around my mum. She used to make me bake beans on toast. I, my, where's my wife? Where's my daughter? I had no money. I, you know, it, it was bad. Yeah. Bad, waking up in the middle of the night, heart palpitations. But again, just keep going. You know, day sleep, day sleep, and one day you wake up and there's a little difference. And, that, and you, or you can you can just want to wish and hope and visualize some change, and it works. Is that, is that that's a big part of it. Do you think is that that hoping and that visualization of you know the good, you know, of that little glimmer, even in even in the dark times, you know. I think think for anyone you know who's going to watch this, who's going to who's suffering with some depression or whatever, when they're really down and feel like there's no hope, I think even if you can just look around and see a little glimmer, you know, even if you've got a roof over your head or you've got a, you know, anything, you've got one person in your life that, that cares about you, or that's got a kind word for you or a smile from someone walking down the street. I think you have to take something, but you, it's in there that you have to just always exactly. believe in yourself. It's hard to believe in yourself when things are going wrong and when you've messed up and, you know, cause I've done it, we've all done it made huge mistakes and it's hard not to beat yourself up and how, how have you kind of pushed through all of that making mistakes and not beating yourself up too much do you know i, I never pass the blame to anyone it's if, if anything goes wrong it's my fault and how do you deal with that how do you deal with that kind of you know that angst inside sometimes of like I've, 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 all, up. I've always had to deal with it it's always mm. been like that ever since i can remember it's always had to be, I've had to deal with the problems. So I've, I've become so hard emotionally, you know, maybe, mm. you know, my missus would tell, you know, she, she would love to get on here and tell you how <laughs> maybe a little bit psychotic I am. Because most big business people have got a little bit of a screw loose because you, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. And to stay highly motivated all yeah. the time, I never switch off. This is my home office here. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be in here to, since, you know, I'll be here from eight o'clock in the morning and I'll be here till 10 o'clock at night. Just sitting here, consuming interesting content, motivating myself, putting audio books on, 
listening, learning, how do people cope with it? And you're, you know, uh, you know, I, I listen to a lot of Grant Cardone and people like that. Some people like him, some people hate him. Yeah, he, he says his stupid things sometimes, but I can no, relate to him because he's one. He's one person. I'll be honest with you. I actually. I, I pretty much detest the way he is, but there's some stuff that he says is is the. He nuts, says some stupid things. He, he says some stupid think, things. I also think business wise, I think he's a uh, he's he's a uh, he's a uh, a proper dodge pot as well. I really do. I but think he, he he sells too much. He's always selling. I just I don't think his business model is an actual business model. I, I don't think he is what he says he is either, and I don't think his business is as successful as he says it is. But I, I, I'm I'm more akin to Gary V, and you know even even uh, Jordan Belfort, I would say. Yeah, speaks I like yes, over, no, over Jordan over. Belfort audiobooks, listening to him all the time. Have you listened? Have you seen on YouTube the? Um, the uh, the the Grant, Grant Cardone, Gary uh, Grant Cardone, yeah. Jordan. They're put the pot <sighs> terrible, isn't it? You need to watch. Yeah, have you you've seen it? Yeah, they seem brutal. I mean, it was it was embarrassing for Grant rude. Cardone. Very rude. I, I thought he was. It was almost like he was on drugs or something. I, I just didn't understand what he was like. You know, Jordan Belfort was asking him sensible questions, and he was just going off into I don't know where. It was... I think when he gets when when Grant gets under put under pressure, he says stupid things. He's his, no his real his real person comes out because yeah, I, I... and here's here's where I see that as as someone's true colours coming out because if you're if you're under fire. And you then start to just say anything because I've had it before with people. I you know you're like Donald Trump. It's a terrible yeah, thing. Liars. People who are liars and people who are, are just coming. People who are charlatans. I believe they when when you when you stress them and pressure them with really really intelligent questions, they crumble. And I think that's what Grant Cardone did. But you know, it's it. I can't deny that he's obviously, you know, making some good money and buying some nice watches. He, and stuff, he is, well, yeah. He, as a role like, model for kids, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're, they're all very simply like Grant Cardone, Gary V, and all these influential people in, on social media in business, they all do one thing, and that's create content at scale. Doesn't have yeah. to be perfect, could be phone to the uh, thing, just put it out there, but yeah. loads of it. And since I've been really consuming all this content with Grant and Gary and some other people like Jordan, you know, I, I've been sort of replicating. And that is why we get so much traffic coming yeah. into new. Yeah. And that's but why I'm building the brand up. Obviously, you do it from a, you know, you do it from a place of, um, you know, I think, I think we as English, you know, British people, we're not as kind of like, ah, anyway. And I think it's a bit more... I think there's a bit more uh, sincerity about it, you know. I think you know with yourself, you know, it's you genuinely want to do a good, you know, good, uh, a good, get good relationships with people. You care about people. That's your real forte, is people, isn't it? And then obviously the job, making sure they're happy. But it's all designed around the person and the relationship. And I think that's a. I think that's an inf you know, a big thing that a lot of people can remember, you know, if they take away, I mean, just to kind of finish up about, you know, lessons and stuff like that. If you, if you could kind of give people some, you know, a takeaway from this, a takeaway from kind of the Nick Jeffrey story, what, what would it be? You know, what would be your advice to like a, a 16 year old you, for instance? Just follow your dreams whatever you want to do make get a, get a piece of paper and just write loads of stuff down and just just go for it you know if you want to be if you want to be a professional footballer just practice go and get a boy you know uh, my uh, daughter's boyfriend 16 year old is like a very very good footballer but he should be out here practicing keep yuppies for six hours a day practice 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 because anyone could become perfect at anything long but you think there's? Do you think there's? Obviously, a, there needs to be a, a, a certain amount of ability. You know, if someone if someone shows an aptitude in something, you think go for that. 
Is that what you're saying? I, I think than... everyone, I think everyone should learn how to build a brand, i.e. their self, build and, and learn how to be confident to, to sell. Because we have got mm -hmm. to sell every, every single day of our life. Whether we're gonna uh, go, to, uh, well, whether I'm talking to you about something, whether I'm uh, about to uh, drive out in my car and, and convince someone to let me out in the car. It's just, you know, every business needs to learn how to sell. And that's what they don't teach you at school. Mm. Selling, because without, without the confidence to sell our idea, mm. can't get anything off. You know, these are educated people. London's full of them. If you go to an estate agent in London, look how many highly educated estate agents there is. And all they're doing is on the phones. Because that's all estate agents are these days, hammering the phones on a call center. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not education. It's been yeah. having the will and the, and, the, and, and the drive to be different. And we all try to, you know, when you're young, I think everyone wants to try and blend in. They want to wear the same clothes and, you know, yeah. look the same. And be the, part is, it's the tribe, it's the tribe um, scenario, isn't it? You know, you want, you find people that your own tribe and then you start to, you know, start to all kind of mold into that same tribe. But I think you're right. As you get older, you have to find your own path and you have to, yeah. you, if you want something extra from life, you have to stand out a little bit in a, in a good way. You know, I, I think so. I think you're right. I think um, it, it sounds like the takeaway from it is though, is your mindset is just never give up, never take no for an answer. Never. And, um, you Cause know, I had people say to me when I was younger, uh, you know, just negative things, always negative. Because, you know, when I, you know, I, I always had a, a pretty face when I was younger. I used to have long, long blonde hair. What on earth happened? I don't know, look at them now, I've got big grey. But, <laughs> but I always thought, I would rely on my looks and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember when the first national lottery came out, I was with all my mates. We were all dressed up on a night out, bought, bought a bottle of champagne because we were so convinced one of us in the room was going to win the first million. <laughs> oh, mate, I love it. I love it. But that years later. That's how positive we were. But you know what? That attitude is, is great, you know, even if, and I think, you know, even if, even if you don't get to, you know, where you, where you're gonna, you, you know, your mind thinks, even if you shoot, it's that whole thing, you shoot for the, shoot for the, you know, the moon, oh, you get, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, it is what it is, isn't it? I think even if you get halfway to your dream, uh, another thing that I think it sounds like a big part of it for you, it's, it's the journey as well. It's that, it's that, it's that every day, it's, it's that, striving for it that you enjoy that hustle and that you know going out to get it because if if tomorrow you all of a sudden were a billionaire would you change me? exactly you'd just be like hold on a minute i'm you know i might have a might go and get a you know bugatti veyron and a yeah. you know a 400 grand watch but you would then step you know, up still go, yeah exactly you'd be like okay now i will be the candy step candy. up how <laughs> wonderful that would be Jesus, that, and that inspires me. So I never get jealous of other people. You know, yeah. Jesus Christ, if you if you if you was a multi-millionaire, I'll be listening to you and thinking, fucking hell, you know, right, right, let's what's he down there? Right, let's 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 get together, let's go and do something. Yeah. You know, never you know, be jealous funny. of other people. It's funny, I've always had that in me as well, that, that instead of being jealous of someone, I've wanted to if I see someone who's doing really well or just doing something, I'm like, oh what and I want to find out about them. I think this is this is one of the things about this why I've started a podcast. And so I want to find out about people, whether they're successful or not. You know, I just, I love kind of finding out the dynamic of how what makes people tick and you know what what's their journey. And then and then maybe we can help inspire other people to to kind of you know, to, to grow or to keep going, or if they're down, what, you know, how can we help them get out of it? So, mate, I, uh, I think we're going to have to wrap it up, but I appreciate your, uh, your time. And, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing, mate. Appreciate it. And let everyone know where they can find you, mate. 
Yeah, so um, obviously we're on every single platform, but you can uh, see us on Instagram at newprojects.co, uh, my YouTube channel, Nick Jeffries, do a, do a search or search for new projects. And the website is www.newprojects.co. So if you need okay. any advice, any free advice, give me a call. 020-773-16841. Boom. Love it, mate. Appreciate it. Grateful. All right, then, mate. Right. Let's press, press stop. Let's press stop recording.